uh, his improvements over the years. You've seen it from afar. What do you see him now? I mean, how can you describe it as an NBA coach? 7-2 uh, Magic Johnson. <laughs> this guy's running fast breaks, man. I mean, he's, he's as good a passer as any guard in this league. It's not wrong. <laughs> The Nuggets boast the best record in the West and lead the conference this many games into a season for the first time since 1976, which I would imagine is a long time before anybody on their current roster was born. Taking on the Knicks, Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray early and often. Nuggets up 22 to 17. Frank Nilekina here with Steele. From Monte Morris, it's it to the rookie Kevin Knox who drives and gets the tough and one layup to go. He'd make that free throw, get 18 points in this game. Missed that shot, but Noah Vonley recovers the rebound. Takes it up strong for the dunk on Trey Lyles. Now the Knicks would lead the way by one at the half, but Jokic impacting the game in every way, the way that he often does. The pass to Torrey Craig for the dunk. Then driving it himself, getting the sky hook here to tie the game at 69. So skilled, so unselfish, so much fun to watch play, Chris. That he is. How about Paul Millsap this season? Back in this lineup, putting Denver ahead here, getting into the paint, getting the fadeaway to go. Then the spin, the crossover, and the jumper. He had 16 points and nine rebounds in this game. It's important he be healthy. They're going to need him in the postseason for sure. Gary Harris back in this lineup for the first time since December 3rd with a hip injury, driving here, getting the tough layup to go. He had six points in 19 minutes in his return. The Knicks, though, staying close in this game. Into the fourth quarter, Emmanuel Moutier. Ooh. Beasley getting the layup to go. Jokic, though, well, I mean, he did it all and closed it out. He missed here, but stuck with it and eventually got it to go. Persistence pays off. The no-look pass here to Beasley for the layup. Look at that. Wow. Let's look at it again, shall we? Come on. That's not fair. It really is. <laughs> he had 19 points, 14 rebounds, and 15 assists, including that one in this game, as the Nuggets go on to win at 115 to 108. Now they defeat the Knicks, maintain the best record in the West, improving to 24 and 11. As the highlights continue, Elsewhere in the Western Conference, the Blazers in Sacramento to take on a team that's off to its best start since 2004, but Yusef Nurkic doing it all for the Blazers. There he is with the layup, then CJ McCollum missing here, he's there for the putback. And he's there for the block on the other end, on Buddy Heel. Every big play seemed like he was involved in. Get this, he had 24 points, 23 rebounds, seven assists, five steals, and five blocks in this game. Wow. Somehow, though, the Kings would jump out to a lead. Bogdanovich would pull up three, then Buddy Heald driving, getting the step-back jumper to go. He had 27 points in this game. That would put the Kings up 99-90, to 90, but Damian Lillard, unsurprisingly, comes up clutch for Portland. It's game time. <laughs> In time, he usually comes through, and he did, Kristen, in the fourth quarter. Wow. He has the Lillard time tattooed on him, so I think that's what he wants us to call it. Lillard time. Okay. All right. Dame time just rolls off the tongue now. Yeah. Yeah. That sentence didn't, but Dame time does. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. The layup and the tie. He had 25 points in this game. That would tie things up at 103. The Kings, though, with a chance to win it here. Let's take a look on the other end of the floor, because De'Aaron Fox... Is going to be the one that takes the shot. Pull up jumper. He can't get that one to fall. So we're headed into overtime, tied at 103 apiece. The Blazers, though, uh, carrying that momentum from the final minutes of the fourth quarter into overtime, getting the win. That's Dame, of course, on the step back jumper. Then McCollum for the pull up jumper. Nurkic, by the way, uh, was on the handoff to CJ, on the steal here. I, he's part of all the big plays. All the big plays he's involved in, and it helps when you have two really good guards there for Portland as well. That would put the Blazers up 112 to 105, and they go on to win it in overtime, 113 to 108. Now, this is their third win in four overtime tries this season. Yusuf Nurkic made history as the only player ever to post a stat line, including 24 points, 23 rebounds, seven assists, five steals, and five blocks. He only had four turnovers, by the way. Let's hear what he had to say after the game. 
So he joins an elite group with at least five points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals on the road. And by the way, his points and rebounds, if you didn't hear me the first three times, were 24 and 23. Wow. So let's take a look at each of the uh, stats he stuffed. And Chris, and everything, every play, dribble, handoff here, an offensive rebound, put back in the paint. Nurkic was really just involved defensively, loose balls, getting on the floor, not diving, not bending at the, at the waist, but getting on the ground. And then right here defensively, those block shots at crucial moments in the game really was just consistent throughout the, the, uh, the entire game and in the, in the postseason, where, or excuse me, in the, in, the, in the overtime, where he just made impact after impact. And of course, that stat line, wow, impressive. You subconsciously read my mind. You said postseason, and you didn't mean to, but that's what I was going to ask. You also said consistency. If he is a viable and consistent third option to that backcourt, Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum, how far could this team go? Well, I mean, that's been the reoccurring theme all along is, is can he be that third guy? He has the ability, but he has to be able to come out and do it consistently. And right here, a beautiful block, getting out in transition here, setting up a screen. Of course, Lillard getting to the rim. This is within a, the last minute of the game. And the defensive plays that he made, once again, Willie Colley Stein, the same play, a block without fouling being aggressive, being active here on the defensive end, contesting, and then getting back to his man, making him take a bad shot, and of course, helping his team secure the rebound or get a foul. Just big plays down the stretch, which you want. And if he can be that third fiddle, they have a chance to go far in the playoffs. Well, up ahead, Kawhi Leonard heads back to San Antonio with the Raptors Thursday. The game's on TNT, but we're gonna talk about it on NBA TV next. To 109, and they go on to win it 122 to 116. Now, this is the game of the day, Wednesday at 4 Eastern here on NBA TV. It was, of course, a career night for both Kawhi Leonard with his 45 and Pascal Siakam with his 28 in the absence of Kyle Lowry. Now, this was Siakam's 10th game this season with at least 20, and he joined us after the game. I want to talk about some of your highlights on your career high night, but I don't think that anything is going to top uh, the little dance that you did before the game. That might be the highlight of the entire evening. Kind of feeling oh, yourself these days, huh? Hey, you know, New Year, you know, we got, we got to start a New Year right. You oh, know? you're strutting out there. Okay. All right, Pascal. All right. Well, you certainly started it off right. How about this, though, Pascal? This is your 10th game this season with at least 20 points. You only had one such game in your first two years in the NBA. What is it that is about? I'm sorry, we're still yeah, watching the, the, yeah. the dance, and I love it. What is it, though, about your game that you feel has improved most? Um, I think, you know, just, just my ball handling, you know, being able to, to um, have the ball in my hands more and um, make plays for others, you know, it gave me opportunities to, to you know, drive lanes and, and find my teammates, you know. I, I, think, I think it kind of opened up the game for me a little bit. Uh, when, when you talk about your, your, your offense and, and, and driving the basketball, uh, talk a little bit about how much, uh, you know, maybe uh, Kawhi has helped you by being there, your relationship with Serge. Uh, the defensive pow prowess that, that the three of you have out on the floor. Defensively, it looks like you three can shut down any opponent anytime you, you, you want to. Uh, how does that feel out on the floor, being able to shut down opponents defensively, but yet also being able to, to turn it on offensively? Uh, I think we pride ourselves on, on defense, you know, that's what we, we, that's the type of team we are. And obviously having Kawhi, you know, who's a, a great defensive player, um, a guy that you, that you can learn from every day, um, his hands and the way he uses his length. Um, I try to just, just learn from him, watch him a little bit. And then obviously Serge protecting the rim for us um, is big. And um, uh, for me, it's just, you know, continue to work on defense because I know that's, what's, that's what got me here. And, and, and I know I'm going to keep, you know, um, just playing hard, trying to get stops, and, and everything else is going to come. Pascal, just... Uh I watch you guys play. It seems like you got a little more space and a little more pace. Is your offensive sets a little different under Nick Nurse? And how does it fit you, the, the, the offense that Toronto's running now? Uh, it's great for me. You know, I, I like to run, you know, um, uh, and as soon as we get the ball, you know, we're running. And, and uh, we have a lot of shooters on the team. Guys, you know, it opens up the floor for, for, for guys like me, uh, Kawhi, driving. Um, so, so it's great. I like the pace. You know, I like, I like what, what Nick Nurse is doing. Yeah. I, I got a question for you, and it's kind of off the beaten path here. Um, you know, Serge has this uh, this cooking show. 
<laughs> I put your head up now. There we go. <laughs> and and I, I just want to know, like, have you been over to the house to to be served a yeah. meal? In, in, uh... Unf unfortunately, I was there one time. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, he's he's not really good at cooking, but um, I think he's funny though. He's funny, so it makes up for it. Wait, how can he not be good at cooking and he's got a cooking show? I it's just know. a cooking um, show, not a good cooking show, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He just, he just, <laughs> he just got about like three ingredients. You know, it's always salt and pepper. The only thing he put in all the food, so um, it's definitely tough to eat. <laughs> well, we're not mad at him. Personality saves most of our jobs as well. But Pascal, I've got to ask you before we go, because it's January now, because you have considered yourself an underrated player in the NBA, because February is next month. How big a motivator is perhaps an All-Star appearance? Um, I think obviously for me, a kid coming from Cameroon, you know, started basketball when he was 16 years old, you know, having a chance to even, you know, like just my name being out there is, is, is a blessing. And uh, for me, I'm not, you know, I'm not really worried about that. You know, I just want to continue to get better. I know, you know, the sky's the limit for me and, and uh, I just want to continue to work hard and, um, you know, whatever happens, happens. Well, we'll worry about it for you and we'll tell the fans to vote for you as well. I mean, come on, <laughs> you, you, you got the opportunity yeah. right now. Pascal, thanks Thank for joining you. us and congrats on such a big night. And he can say that All-Star is not a motivator, but his game perhaps speaks otherwise. What's most impressive to you about the improvement that he's made? Well, I mean, I think, you know, it's a similar sort of path that Kawhi Litter traveled early in his career. Came into the league uh, as a defensive player, uh, has great length, and just has worked on his game. And in year three now has emerged as a reliable, trusted uh, score sort of guy who can do everything offensively and defensively for the Toronto Raptors. And this is important, particularly as Lowry has struggled a bit with his injury and he's out right now with a bad back. Uh, but Siakam has so emerged as someone that they can count on. And, and, and that's huge. And he, he talked about in that interview, you know, learning from, from Kawhi, learning from him, watching how he uses his length and his hands and just all the little nuances to the game. And so uh, a, a great example for him to have uh, a, a, a guy who's, you know, MVP in the finals, a guy who's you know, going to be in that conversation this year uh, as a potential league MVP. Uh, but Siakam stepping up and, you know, you ask that question, it, it's conceivable. He might actually be an all-star. He's having that kind of season. And if Toronto can continue to be at the top and, and possibly, uh, you know, be at, be at the top of the standings where they've been most of the time here uh, thus far this season, he has a chance. Well, it was also a career night for Kawhi Leonard with 45 points. So let's see how he did it. He was 16 of 19 from two-point land. He was also a perfect eight for eight in the restricted area. And you, Grant Hill, having perfected the mid-range game, seem like the perfect person to ask to break down his night. Yeah, yeah, perfected is right. Um, That's, yeah, I it, felt it, like it was the right word. <laughs> no, but Kawhi Leonard, I love the diversity of shot making. He's not settling for just long jump shots. He's getting to the rim, as you talked about. He's attacking in transition. Of course, his mid-range game is on point. But he's constantly forcing the issue. You're having the defense stay on their heels. You have to guess sort of what you're going to do and how to stop him. And he got it going right there. He was efficient, as you talked about. But everything was, was moving forward with force, as you saw in that highlight package. And we may not be talking enough about their defense because they're turning that high power defense into offensive opportunities. No, no, no question. I mean, their defense is, uh, I, I think, really, really one of the underrated parts of their game. And they have length. They have athleticism. They have trust out there on the floor. They have experience mixed in with youth. And you see right here, Greg Monroe plays this pick and roll perfect. And they secure the rebound and get out on the break where they're so, uh, so talented. And right here, Anunobi just making the effort, getting the steal, leads to an easy basket in transition. You can't defend against that if you're Utah. Turn the ball over. And of course, right here, once again, getting into the paint, active hands, Danny Green and getting out in transition for the easy basket. And I love this play right here, Greg Monroe, big guy, contesting at the rim without fouling, forcing a tough shot. And once again, you're off to the races, starting the fast break, getting baskets in transition off your defense, a layup right here is one of the recipes for success for these Raptors. Well, we can talk a lot about the Toronto Raptors, and it is, of course, warranted. But meanwhile, the Milwaukee Bucks are <laughs> off to their 